Hey there. So if you are new to llamas and you're not sure what to expect if you're expecting a baby, this video is for you. Or if you just wanna tune up on your birthing skills. So most people when they're new to llamas, they walk outside and surprise, there's a baby on the ground. But if you can learn your llamas, you'll see the signs of labor before that happens. So some things you can look for are uh, some new onriness. So if your girls are kind of like putting their ears back and they're spitting at everybody and that's not normal for them, that can be a sign of pain because they're in labor. Um, you might see them pawing at the ground or, or leaving their head on the ground. You'll see them go to the poop pile, but nothing happens and they might stay there for quite a while. They might separate themselves from the herd and go find a nice, safe, quiet space to go have their baby. So watch for those signs and try to watch uh, before mom goes actually into active labor that you are ready. So before birthing season ever starts, we make ourselves a little kit and we put ours in just kind of a big toolbox kind of a thing so that it's, we can pick it up and easily run outside. The first thing that I think of when I think of birthing kit is getting the baby here. So sometimes mom needs a tiny bit of help and sometimes mom needs a lot of help and then sometimes I'm not enough help and we have to call the vet. But this is so important to have in your kit. I cannot stress it to you enough. Long gloves. They go all the way up to your shoulder, you put them on, and then anytime you reach in, you are covered so you're not introducing new bacteria. You wanna make sure that these gloves stay in their packet and that it's clean as possible. You might even put this into a Ziploc bag so that it stays super clean. The next thing is lube because you are going up into a dark, scary place and you need to make sure that it's as comfortable as possible for that girl. She's already pushing out a giant baby and you're putting your arm in there. So those two things I can't stress enough. This lubrication, actually you can get it in a giant gallon size with a pump on it if you want to. So never, you can never ever have too much of this stuff. Once baby is out, if you had to intervene and you ever put your arm anywhere that was not normal, you're gonna give your female a shot of antibiotic. So our favorite currently is called Exceed and we just get it per dose at our vet's office and we always keep a little bit on hand. This does not have a long shelf life, so we don't keep it from season to season. We just get enough that we can give our, our females a shot after if we, had, if we had to intervene. All right, so next step. Once baby's here, it's important to watch for a couple of really important stages. The first one is that they're warm enough. The second one is that they've eaten something. So we wanna make sure that that happens the warm thing needs to happen right away and if they're not warm enough they can't eat anything because their body won't digest it so these are our getting baby warm kit so we want to use a towel and then a blow dryer so if it's going to be if they were out in the rain or snow it's really common for for llamas to get stressed out with with changing weather and then have them in the middle of a rainstorm or in the snow or whatever the case may be so baby might get cold if it's really windy so you're gonna to towel dry them off as quickly as possible and then I try to c carry them into a sheltered area so they can get out of the elements if that's a problem. If it's nice and warm and sunny outside and the other llamas are kind of leaving you alone, then I would leave them in the pasture where they are. Llamas have lived in the wild for thousands of years. They really don't need your help. If everything's fine, if baby's warm and you can tell that there's no obvious health problems, leave them out with the herd. They'll be the most comfortable there. But if it's cold, you need to heat them up. So we have our, our heating up items and a secret with towels is that you never want to wash them with detergent. And I never put mine in the dryer with, with any kind of uh, softening agent. So I just, I wash them with no soap. I don't put them in the, drawer, in the dryer and I line dry them. That way they smell like llama, not like humans. If you get one of your nice, beautiful bath towels from your house, and you rub it all over them and it smells like you and like shampoo and perfume and all this stuff, then, then the llama's gonna associate that baby with you and she's not gonna take it. So you always wanna make sure that it at least smells like a llama. So towel dry with like, not a dirty towel, but just a llama smelling towel. Make sure to have special towels for that. And then blow drying, you just wanna blow dry the core as much as you can because just like with, with humans, the appendages are the least important. Don't worry about the ears and the face worry about the belly all the way around. You might have to turn baby side to side and we're looking for a temperature of 99 to 102. So that's our next step. 
need to actually take that temperature. So this is up the bum, it's an anal temperature, and you wanna make sure to have a little bit of lubricant for that too. You don't wanna be doing any damage to that new baby bum. So you're gonna lube that up, make sure our temperature is somewhere between 99 and 102. If it's not, if you walked out and it was this like killer rainstorm and baby is at 85, freezing to death, you're gonna wrap that baby in a great big garbage bag or two and throw her into hot water. You wanna keep her dry, but you need to get her warm as soon as possible. Sometimes they're in that hot water for 45 minutes to an hour before they even start to become active at all. And like I said, they can't eat if they're cold because they won't digest it. It will just go rancid in their belly and make them sick. So heat them up and once their temperature is nice and stable, then take them back outside to mom. If you have somewhere where mom can be where you can do that, that's even better. But sometimes mom is a little panicky to watch you put baby in a garbage bag and into the tub. So we usually separate the two and if, if things get really dire like that. And usually they see that in the early spring. So we like our babies to come April, May, when it's starting to be springtime and a little bit warmer. All right, so now that we have baby is warm, this is our next product that we want to look at. Most people recommend using an iodine on the umbilical cord. That's a very vulnerable area. It can suck up E. coli and introduce bacteria into the baby. So we want to make sure to get it uh, sterilized or you know just some kind of protection for the baby so they're not getting hurt. My vet specifically recommends betadine versus iodine because iodine is a little bit strong. So this is my backup one. I'm actually out of betadine right now. This is my backup iodine for when I run out of betadine but that is super important. You're gonna be doing that three times a day if possible. Definitely right out of the oven you wanna do it, and then again, multiple times until that umbilical kind of starts to get crusty and dried up. And then you know that you're not gonna be introducing bacteria that way. The next thing about the umbilical cord is a couple of times I have had a baby where you lift, lift up the baby off the ground and there's a spot of blood on the ground where it was laying. That means the umbilical cord hasn't closed up all the way. And you'll see that occasionally when you have a really thick umbilical cord that it just hasn't closed all the way up when it's separated from mom. Or sometimes it pulls all the way off instead of leaving a nice tail. So if that happens, I always keep a little bit of dental floss or if you have something else that would work to just tie up the top of that and close it up so they don't bleed to death. If you don't close it up, they will bleed to death. So floss would work, or if you wanna call your vet and find a specialized product to do so, that would be fine. And then check it several times a day to make sure that it hasn't moved, especially in those first couple of hours when they're trying to get up and they're falling down and trying to use those legs. That's gonna be really important to make sure it's firmly closed. All right, the next thing is Within about two hours, we want to see them nursing. That's a great big step to see is that babies are eager to find where their lunch is at. And we wanna make sure to keep them off of surfaces that do not supply food. So if you notice that your baby is, is you know, searching on the wall and nibbling at little things that they can find or the fence, or you wanna make sure to encourage them back over to mom. And all of our encouragement and all of our help, we do th so silently because we don't want them to learn our voice as mom's voice. So as you're encouraging them off the wall, you're just going to kind of not rudely, but abruptly abrasive, you know, a little abrasively move them away. So they know that you're not friendly. They don't want you as their mommy. And then they'll go and find their nice snuggly mom. So that's, that's a tip that we always recommend to people. If you can't get them nursing or if mom doesn't have any milk, this is some oxytocin and I would always call a vet if you ever need to use this. It's very low dosage and your vet may have some different options for you, but I always keep it around with the syringe ready to go. I believe you just do one, I have to call my vet every time. I use it so infrequently, but I think it's one cc is all you do. If you do too much, you can cause your llama to prolapse because it causes those hormones to really start working and pushing everything out. So we wanna be very, very careful if you wanna use an oxytocin, call your vet. Um, but what it does is that any milk that's up inside of their body, it will drop it down into that udder so that it becomes accessible for the baby. If mom isn't making any milk, then it won't help. And it only makes it available for about 20 to 40 minutes, somewhere in there. 
So it works really fast if, if baby's actively trying, but you can tell they're just not getting anything. And a way to tell if baby is getting something is to smell their breath. <laughs> you can smell llama milk on baby's breath, or you can just simply reach up and try and milk a llama, which is very hard. If you've milked a cow or a goat, you might understand the process and be able to get a little milk out. But like me, when I first started, even our biggest, most beautiful udders I couldn't get milk out of. So maybe go over to a dairy farm, have them show you how to do it so that you can practice on your llamas and see if there's any milk there. The mom makes a, um, a cap over each nipple. So if baby, if you can see that baby's only ever eaten off one, you might consider pulling off the other caps or pulling off all four caps and rubbing some milk on those areas so the baby can smell where she's supposed to be going. If your baby is very cold and lethargic and hasn't been able to eat anything, you need to get her something to eat. So I always keep items that would be helpful for that. This is used for tube feeding. Again, I would recommend that you call your vet. These are two different tubes, one that's soft, one that's very rigid. And it just depends on your llama and how long their neck is. So if you put this into the wrong place, if you put it down into your, their lungs and you, you didn't know any better, you'll instantly drown and kill your llama if you put any milk down this tube. So always get an instruction demonstration from your veterinarian before using a tube. And they'll, do the, they'll help you do the measurements and make sure that you know how to avoid the lungs. There's some quick, easy tests that they'll, they'll teach you. Some other things, this is the syringe that goes onto the bottom of that where you'd be able to pull the, this top part out, pour the milk in, and just put it straight into the tummy if, if needed. The next item is you could try a syringe. This is a giant syringe. They make them in lots of different sizes. They come in 5cc all the way up to 200cc. Um, but you could use this for milk as well. So if, you were, if you're really good, like Bo's really good at milking and he can milk some llama milk out, and then you can get a little for baby so that she has a little bit of energy and that she's not having trouble. All right, the last thing that I wanna talk about is colostrum. So you may be thinking to yourself, I have no idea what that is. Colostrum is like a life-saving miracle milk that first comes out of mom's bodies for about three days when the baby is born. And it's a little bit thicker and it's full of antibodies that will set up baby's life for the rest of its life. So it gives them all of these antibodies for their body to work with. And something about colostrum is that it's always better fresh and it's always better from an animal source. So if you have goats around you, that's a universal colostrum that you can use on your llamas, and it is the absolute best, unless you can milk out llama colostrum from a llama, which is very, very hard, so I do not recommend it. But if you don't have access to something like that, you could use a substitute like a colostrum gel or paste or something like that. They also do fusions of different types of things that you can consult your vet about if you want to, but it is so important for your baby to get it within 24 hours. After, their, after that, their guts start to close up and then it's no longer viable for the, for the baby to absorb it, even though the mom is still making it. So very important, let's review really quick. Number one, we'll get the baby here safely. If you're not sure why the baby's not coming out, never be afraid to call your vet. And he will give you, or she, will give you wonderful demonstrations on how to fix future problems if you do run into that. Number two is taking a temperature, making sure our baby's warm and that there's no obvious birth defects that need attention right away. And then number three is eating. And we wanna see them start to try to nurse or latch on within two hours. And then, the last thing that we should be looking at, which is kind of in the middle, is making sure that baby can get up by itself. About that 30 minute mark, they should be starting to be active and wanting to get up. So if they're not, you may need to do some human intervention there too. The last thing that I want to show you is after we let them out of our care, if it's kind of cold outside, they make these wonderful little llama coats, which are so cute. Little llama in a little coat and they've come in all sorts of sizes and they come specially made for llamas. Our favorite type is when they have Velcro, just a simple Velcro chest strap and the one that goes under the belly. They also have, some of them have straps to go around the legs and things. We usually end up cutting those off because sometimes they get stuck in places they shouldn't be. So typically just you can just cut those out. You can also use a sweater or whatever you've got. A, a large dog coat might work if you don't have access to a llama coat, but they're quite inexpensive and you can find them online. 
So that pretty much wraps up my basic llama kit. I have lots more stuff in there, but it's for more specialized uses. So don't be scared when your baby comes because you're gonna be prepared with all of these basics. Have a wonderful birthing season and we will see you guys next time.